What's going on guys? Apathetic here with all your tips, recommendations, and everything in between. And today, I'm bringing you some tips to help you earn your flawless title in Trials of Osiris. Let's get into it. Tips I'm going to provide on earning your flawless title are going to focus on what I believe to be the hardest triumphs to complete to earn since two of the triumphs, if you're completing the tough ones, should be completed naturally. So I'll be focusing on tips for carrying someone to flawless, win 10 matches after seven wins, and of course, completing a flawless passage of confidence. Starting with carrying someone to flawless this can be one of the tougher triumphs because in some cases can force you to handicap your team a little bit or depending on who you're playing with, create a little uncertainty in how your carry will perform. Now, I don't mean to be rude, but typically most high skilled or even slightly less than high skilled players have gone flawless at this point in the season. So whoever you are trying to carry will have some limitations to their performance or they simply don't play very often, which again could lead to limitations in performance. So what can we do about this? The best thing you can do is make sure that you and whatever player is going to help you with this carry is as strong as possible. The less load whatever player you're trying to carry has to take on, the better and will hopefully help their overall play more if they don't feel this intense pressure to step up and perform outside of their abilities. The next important piece of completing this triumph is communication, but not just in the sense of calling out, but communicating what you do in certain parts of the map. Things like what areas you like to push, where you are expecting your teammates to push, and calling out if you're simply trying to bait the enemy team to open things up for your teammates. These things can help your carry or a less skilled player have a better idea of how you play and what you expect in certain situations, which ultimately will give them more information to make better decisions and play better around the higher skilled players on your team and fill a role instead of them feeling like they do have to do too much. <laughs> Lastly, you have to be able to help coach whatever player you're helping and be positive and encouraging. This will help them not only fix mistakes, because everyone makes mistakes, but also helps them mentally in the game play better and not be scared they're gonna yell or be mad at them if they mess up. The more relaxed and loose a player is, the better they typically play, and the better our carry plays, the easier this triumph will be. Moving on to our flawless passage of confidence and wins past seven, I'm going to throw this together because I feel most people knock these out together. So there may be tips here that are straightforward for some and less straightforward for others. The first thing is, and this may be obvious, but make sure you're running with a stacked team. Now a stacked team people sometimes mistake for being three players who are all really good. While there is some truth to that, there is also the case where throwing three highly skilled players together can generate other issues. They all have play styles that are far too similar or too different, and this can cause players to clash, which can generate unnecessary frustration. You want to find a team where you guys bring out the best in each other, and there can be an open line of communication on what's working and what's not. Whether that's a specific push or, hey, blank, you need to switch off your shoddy or sniper when we play against this team. Speaking of communication, this is also going to be a big one. Something that can really help your team communication is before jumping straight into your card, load up a private match with your team and run through the map together. And during this time, come with what, up with what certain areas of the map will be called and where that exact location is. This mentally warms up your team for the map and give, getting familiar with more nuanced areas, but also ensures that you and your entire team are on the same page thus preventing moments where someone didn't know what to call a certain area of the map. Another piece to communication isn't just calling out what you see, it's calling out what you're going to do before you do it. One of my least favorite things in trials is when one of my teammates pushes out without calling it out, they trade or die, and now our team is in terrible position because no one knew what that player was doing as they were doing it. Calling out when you're pushing in or when you're weak allows your team to play better around you and allows everyone to make the best decision as a team. If I know my teammate is pushing and they are calling it out, now I can push in with them and be there for the trade and make our push a lot more successful since I can now provide support to my teammate. Now when you've combined all this together, your team will be much better equipped to not only complete a confidence card, but also string wins together past seven. The next thing we really need to address, and I wish we didn't, is that particularly on PC at some point, you and your teammates are either gonna face cheaters or probably get hit with an error code. It could be on game seven or it could be on game one. While we can all agree that this sucks and is something that shouldn't be happening, at the end of the day, we can't really control it. So this isn't to say you can't be frustrated or get upset, but once you let those emotions out, you have to be able to mentally reset and move on. Because if you can't, it's going to destroy not only this card you're trying to go follow us on, but the next two cards. Because now you're just in this terrible mood and headspace, and you're all hung up on the previous card that is long gone. Don't cry over spilt milk. Let it go, and for you and your team's sake, do your best to focus on the next card. If you can't do that, and you're just too tilted out of your mind, then you have to be able to be an adult and make the call to take a break, get some food, and come back with a refreshed mindset. 
My next tip for completing wins past seven and a flawless confidence card is playing at a time where most higher skill players may be offline. For trials, the Friday at launches is probably the most sweaty day to play because there are a lot of people gunning for world's first flawless and everyone is also feeling refreshed and motivated from having a week off from trials as well. Therefore, this is probably not the best time to be trying to complete these more difficult triumphs, but if you're determined to play, you may be able to get at the very least a flawless run in to unlock the confidence passage and then depending on how you're feeling knock out a couple of wins past seven if you're lucky now the times i found trials to be significantly easier is typically in the late evenings even on the friday playing in the morning compared to the evening has a huge difference for me and how hard i have to actually try so figure out for your time zone what is the time you tend to have the easiest amount of games and that is the time to focus on knocking out these triumphs Lastly, guys, and this one could be very intricate, and that's your trials loadout, specifically your stat distribution on your character. You're going to want to focus heavily on recovery no matter what class you play, because this allows you to survive more fights and get back into the fight much faster. I would also highly suggest using mods that increase your ability to regenerate your super. So mods like pump action are a good example of this. The goal here is to boost your survivability, increase the speed that you get your super. So hopefully you can get it before the other team. Now, if you guys are looking for more details or want to see what I run specifically, then I'd recommend checking my trials loadout video. I'll link it down below for you guys where I cover things a little more in depth. And I don't want to dive into all that here in this video when I have a video dedicated to that for you guys. With that, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. It's a free way to support me. And also, don't forget to follow me at twitch.tv forward slash apathetic. We've been streaming a lot there lately, so that's a great place to catch some of my trials gameplay live. Also, interact with me directly, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. We're going to try to beat that Don. He's not peeking it. Yes, sir. Just run. Just run. Yeah, like always. Run. I headshot him. I'm running, I'm running. He's regening right now, he's regening. I'm running inside. Lot one guy is on my orb. Ah, but if you pop, you can res me. Yeah, I will. Oh no, let's wrap back I, to Jamie's I see, orb. I see no, uh, only a titan on me now. Oh, wanna pop? There's a titan on my res. Alright. Alright, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> see, he juked him right there, he broke his ankle. Windows. Here it is! It's fine, it may just be a little longer. Sniper at the very back, they use Pushing one shot, inside. I use one. Got him one. I need my hit. Sack, 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 sack. I killed one, I killed one, I killed one. Come on, believe in Habana. Habana Club. Your daddy. <laughs> Calm down there. Oh shit, I didn't open there. See if I can catch the sniper. We're halfway back to my grenade. Let me on top of boxes. I just don't want to peek this. There's an eight. I got one. Nice. Shoot that shit. One shoot shot on the left. One shot on the left. Yeah. If you can if you can if you can throw an eight, he's dead. Got him. Right shot, right shot, right shot, one shot. Right shot, one shot. Right shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. Oh, all this ammo. A lot of ammo, yeah. Nice. Yeah, these guys didn't look like good players from the very beginning. <laughs> they just start respawning on us fourth round. The sniper's gonna be there. He's just sniping. Sniping outside. There's two snipers now. Either two snipers or one sniper. Still. Yo, I, I put men. tags on all of them. What's he looking at me? Nice. I have a sniper in body. He's one inside. Oh, stairs. Facing him. He's dead. He's no help inside stairs. And he's not dead. Dude, this guy is one shot. What the fuck? He's still alive. Bro, I'm playing with this guy. Yo, Hunter is so OP. It is fucking OP. Like, I realized playing with those, like, guys. Apple, you're they're not. Fine, dude. Haven't been calling out at all. <laughs> Are you streaming, Apple? No. I just mute myself a lot. Why? I'm just like doing stuff and I want you guys to have to like listen to my shit. Oh no, I'm not gonna play. Got one. I need it on heavy, I don't know if it's gonna do much. Yeah, they're not touching it. Uh, sniping on the stairs. Good ball. 